Hi everyone, welcome to Man with Demon. Please don't forget to subscribe, enjoy the video. The scene unfolded with a scene a girl named Rosen asked, Is this truly what you want? You, are you able to believe whatever I say? A man Ian Kerner standing in front of her replied, I don't care. She gets shocked and thinks he doesn't care. What exactly does he not care about? I know very well how dangerous trust is. The deeper the trust, the worse it is when you get stabbed in the back. The wound deepens and hatred festers. Ian Kerner said, So tell me anything, Rosen. She thinks he said it didn't matter to him. If that's the case, then I'll tell him the truth. I am, he asked, are you good at lying? She replied, nope, not at all. He said, this is what's written in the report on you. He reads the report, skilled in fraud and setting disputes. Persuasive. Is highly intelligent and extremely eloquent. Be careful when speaking to her or you might get caught up in it. Rosen said, I don't know what all these mean. She smiled and said, I've never told a single lie. Monty Island Lake Vise. He said, I've never lied. Those words. You said them in the courtroom. She leans towards him and said, yeah. The judge didn't listen to a word of it. Anyways, is there anything else written on that piece of paper? Even if I'm going to be arrested, it feels a bit unfair. Ian Kerner reading something on a paper asked her, name. She said, why does you need to ask that? Unless you're from the countryside, there's not a single person that does not know my name. He said, it's protocol name. She replied, Rosenwalker. He said, there's a different name on the documents. She smiled and said, this name is the right one. Ian Kerner said to her, I'm not curious about your real name. All I want is for the name on this document to be confirmed by you saying it. She replied, Rosen Howards. He said, yes, Rosen Howards. She said, unlucky, what are you writing? I'm Rosen Howards. He said, at the age of 17, she was sentenced to 50 years in prison, Perny Women's Prison, to be exact. She escaped a year later, climbed down the hill, crossed the Tobe Mountains barefoot, and was arrested three months later as a fugitive in St. Benes received an additional 25 years in prison and was transferred to the highly secured al Kafez prison, escaped prison again five years later. She escaped the Imperial Army's pursuit for a year. al Kafez says she escaped by digging a hole with a spoon. He asked, is everything true? She replied, of course. You'd faint if you knew what I went through to get that spoon. I rotted there several times because of a dirty prison guard. He said, don't say useless thing. Just answer the questions asked. She said, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, she thinks, Ian Kerner. It's nice to see the hero frown, isn't it? The famous war hero Ian Kerner. Is there anyone who didn't see his face during the war? When the planes flew, propaganda painted with his likeness poured down like rain. The moment the broadcast with his voice resounded through the sky, we looked up as if bewitched. The government was well aware of how simple it is to deceive people. A young, tall pilot was a good tool. They used him during the anxiety and despair of war. Because we needed Ian Kerner. He asked, what is your crime? She gets shocked hearing this and asked, what crime? He said, the reason why you are sent all the way to Monty Island, the worst prison on earth. You escaped from prison. Twice at that. The pride of the Imperial Army was utterly crushed because of you, not that one. Why were you imprisoned in the first place? She said, I'm innocent. He said, as I said, this is an administrative confirmation procedure. I have absolutely no interset in your argument. She again said, I'm innocent. He said, it is rare for a prisoner to honestly admit that they have committed a crime. Insisting on innocence doesn't override the fact that you were convicted. She said, but that doesn't change the truth. I'm innocent. Truth beats assumptions. God will know. Ian Kerner replied, I said I wasn't interested in your argument. Answer me honestly. Meanwhile a man named Henry comes and shouts, Commander. He shouts nervously, What are you doing? Ian Kerner said, As you can see I'm interviewing the prisoner. Seeing him she thoughts, You scared me. I almost bit my tongue. Henry asked, No, why are you doing that? He replied, It's proper procedure for transport officer to identify the prisoner. This is the prisoner we should pay attention to the most. Henry said, I know the commander is very well aware, but you don't have to do this kind of work. Moreover, those who are sent to Monty Island are the worst type of prisoners. He said, this time, the infamous witch of 
Meanwhile he stops noticing Rosen and shouts seeing her. You're the witch of Alcafez, aren't you? Henry asked Ian Kerner. Why the heck are you asking me to interview such a dangerous prisoner? Hearing this she asked, Do I look dangerous in your eyes? Henry said to Ian Kerner, Even if she looks so skinny, you can't be careless. She is the one who escaped from the Alcafez prison. You saw the data I presented to you. At the age of 17, meanwhile she interrupts him saying, Henley Howards, I killed my husband. I stabbed him 36 times with a knife. The coroner confirmed that it was a hate crime. Even when he had breathed his last, the killer continued to stab the body. It wasn't me. I was a good wife who loved her husband. It was a robbery. Many people were jealous of Hindley. It could not be weird for High to be stabbed to death. But how could you not even conduct a proper investigation? How cloud you throw me into jail while ignoring everything I've said? Ian Kerner stops her saying, stop acting. It doesn't matter what kind of wife you were, as long as the verdict stands you're guilty. She said, as expected crying like this doesn't work, Rosen said but look here. Look at me do you think I'm able to kill that bastard with such a slim body? He replied, no one thought you'd be able to break out of parents women's prison and al -Kafes. He steps towards her saying, but you did it. It's the same, just because you're a powerless woman with a small frame doesn't mean it's impossible. If all the evidence points to you, then you are the culprit. He stands in front of her and said you are lying. He ordered Henry, bring the prisoner with you, Henry. She starts shouting, I wasn't lying. I'm not guilty. Get up, she asked, where are you taking me? Henry holding her arm said, can't you move any faster? She said, even so, you're far gentler compared to the other guards. Under normal circumstances, I would have been able to escape by now, she thinks. But if you look at the relationship between the prisoner and the guard, it's like a battle between a cat and a mouse. If I'm careless, I'd be caught, and the moment I'm not alert, I'll miss the chance to escape. However, I'm good at taking advantage of any slim opportunities to escape. This time too, I will win. Henry asked, is the party over? Ian Kerner replied, of course it is. Henry said, I see the commander brought the witch of Alcafez were you going to show her to the guests. All who boarded the vise wanted to tour the prison in the first place. I thought it'd be quite interesting. Ian Kerner asked, isn't she a celebrity? Henry said, not everyone is as brave as the commander. After the war, many things have changed. Steamships, which were originally used in the military, have been converted into ocean liners. The vise ship being one of them. What used to be filled with gunpowder smoke, gunshots, and wounded soldiers were quickly replaced by colorfully decorated parties and upbeat music. The destination of this refurbished ship is Monty Island. This is where the infamous prisoners are left to die. It's funny how these tourists are eager to see what it looks like. Besides, if the awful stench hit their noses, they would have vomited and made a fuss. Even rotting corpses on a battlefield would smell better than this. Hearing all this she thinks, you better watch your tongue. Ian Kerner said, we were not any different on the battlefield. Henry shouts, that's not the case here. While we were out on the battlefield trying to save lives, this girl killed her husband. Henry said to her, you should be thankful you weren't hanged on the spot, but you escaped twice, wasting both manpower and taxes. She interrupts him saying, ah, you are really noisy. Blah blah, you really have loads to say. Can't you just shut up? Henry shouts, what? Ian Kerner turns towards him and said, Henry. Stay sharp. Don't waste your emotions on unnecessary things. I apologize for my subordinate's rudeness. Henry gets confused and shouts, Sir Kerner, you really shouldn't let your guard down. This woman might be a witch. He replied, keep up. They came outside of the room and she gets astonished seeing the sea. Ian Kerner said, I have something to show you. She seeing a beautiful view of sea and the moon from the ship said, it's beautiful. She thinks, if you are going to be a prisoner, you might as well be an infamous one. I never thought I'd be able to see a side like this in my lifetime. Ian Kerner comes to her and said, they said you escaped Al Kafez by digging a hole. She said, that's right. Ian Kerner asked, did you really go down the cliff naked? She asked, what kind of answer do you want? Ian Kerner said, people are saying you used magic to escape. She gets shocked hearing this and asked, is that true? The last person who succeeded in escaping Al-Kafez 36 years ago was a witch. 
That's why when my jailbreak was first reported on the media, people were convinced that I was a witch. People are naturally afraid of things they can't understand. In an era where science is praised and magic is persecuted, however, traces of the previous era remained. As their numbers began to decrease, the witches hid themselves away, but they didn't disappear. She said if I were a witch, would I be living like this? I wouldn't have been caught in the first place. I wouldn't have left my hands shackled this way. Besides, I don't think it makes sense for me to be on this boat with tourists. Henry said, sir, it's best if you don't believe her. This woman lies whenever she opens her mouth. She's really good at it too. It was written in the data sheet. Did you look at it? She almost fooled the entire nation by pretending to be innocent and wept throughout the first trial. Rosen said, look here, you're very lucky. If I were really a witch, I would have sealed your lips sooner. Henry gets shocked and said, what? She said, I passed the magic discrimination test. What more do you need? If that's not enough, does that mean a soldier of the country doesn't possess enough intelligence to grasp that? Henry starts sweating and shouts, this brat. Ian Kerner said in a cold tone, Henry Leville, take your hands off the prisoner. If you can't control your emotions and run wild one more time, I will report you to upper management. Henry gets shocked hearing this and said, but... Ian Kerner said, bring what I ordered. He said, Rosen Howards. The infamous escapee in the Empire and the Witch of al -Kafes. She said, what? Suddenly. Ian Kerner said, it does not matter whether you're a liar, telling the truth or a witch. I just wanted to remind you of a few obvious facts. He comes towards her and said, first, you are a convicted prisoner sentenced to life imprisonment in Monty Island Prison. Second, I was ordered to take you to Monty Island. Third, even though al Kafez has had several escapees so far, none of them have escaped from Monty Island. He said, no one can escape. Even if you're a witch. She thinks hearing this, he's kindly trampling on me. I'm sure there must be a lifeboat or a handcuff key here. If I want to escape, I must do it before we arrive at the island. Henry comes and said, Sir Kerner, I brought what you ordered. Henry brings some meat and seeing it Rosen gets confused and thinks, meat. What the hell? Ian Kerner dropping the meat in water said, look carefully. He said, let's see what the sea is like. As soon as the meat hits the water a monster comes and eat it. Henry with a smile on his face said, look carefully, you witch. This sea is full of things like that. There's nowhere for you to run. She gets shocked seeing it and thinks, damn it. At this rate, Ian Kenner showing keys to her said, if you want to be a monster's snack, you can take a lifeboat and go on a new adventure. He steps closer to her and said, come to think of it. He said in a cold tone, you seem to want this. Seeing him she thinks, Lon Kerner is not a gentleman. Ian Kerner said, it would be nice if you change your mind right now. Rosen Howard. She thinks, a guard can't be a gentleman. Haven't I known it all along? He's the same person from the propaganda, and yet different. Ordinary people would never know this side of him. At least not for me. No matter what. I'm just a rat. In the next scene Rosen was sitting in her prison. She thinks, is there really no other way? Meanwhile Maria said, hey, you really won't tell me? Rosen asked, what? Maria said, I mean Ian Kerner. Didn't you have an interview with him? Rosen said, I did. Maria asked, what did he say? Rosen replied, he told me not to think about escaping. Maria said hearing this, it is something that doesn't even appear in textbooks. She asked, is that all he said? Rosen asked her, what exactly do you want to hear? She replied, what else? Maria asked, was that really all you talked about? Rosen with a smile on her face asked, what do you want to hear, Maria? Maria smiled and said, what else? A young and pretty prisoner went to the young and handsome commander's room. It's because my imagination is running wild. Hurry up and tell me the details. Rosen asked, young and pretty? How can you say that when you can see how I look? Maria said, anyway, he's the youngest among us. Did nothing really happen? Rosen asked, why would it? She said, Ian Kerner would do it because he was in need of a girl. Maria asked, why don't you come closer? She gives an evil smile and said, like we did in al -Kafes. Rosen said, Ian Kerner isn't the only problem. She tells her, there are monsters in the sea. Maria said, but that doesn't mean, no way. Maria asked her, you're not going to give up, are you? Maria of al -Kafes. She was a prisoner more worthy of the nickname, which of al -Kafes than me.
If the guard controlled the outside of the cell, Maria was the one who controlled the inside of the cell. The man outside of Maria's eyes died in prison fulfilling his sentence. When I was transferred to Alcafez, I was a well-known prisoner who had already succeeded in escaping once. Maria said to her when she met her first time, Hey, escapee, are you going to wake up all the guards? She thinks, I wondered if it was because of my popularity. Maria said, Oh my, where'd you get the spoon? She thinks, after I caught Maria's eyes, the prisoners received me with her as the leader, and my prison life became smoother than ever. I didn't understand the reason at that time. Maria said, Answer me, Rosen. Rosen thinks, but I do now. Maria asked her in a serious tone, Are you going to give up? Rosen thought, She wanted my victory. The way I see it, they wanted to crush the pride of the Imperial Army and disappear. It was a kind of belief of wanting to live somewhere conformably. Rosen said to her, No, don't you know me, Maria? She gives a smile and said I never give up. She thinks because I was their idol. Maria holding her shoulder said, That's a good idea. She gives her a cigarette and said, Here, smoke this. Maria asked, Want me to light it up for you? Rosen seeing it thinks, Where do you get this from? Rosen said, You know, that commander, Ian Kerner, wasn't he a pilot? He must have made a lot of merit in the war, even if he didn't receive a higher government position. What's he doing here? This isn't something the Air Force would do. Maria said, I don't know. Isn't it because one of his body parts is damaged? Rosen said, he looked normal. She thinks he's damaged? That perfect human? Maria said, it isn't necessary to have something cut out to be damaged. Rosen asked then, she asked, what's that? Rosen gets shocked and said, that person? That doesn't make sense. Maria said, whether it makes sense to you? Or not, I don't care. Maria said, it's not important to us, right? What matters is how you fuck that bastard and get us out of here. Rosen replied, it only works on brainless bastard. To be honest, I don't know what to do as of now. For example, let's say we managed to steal the key. Even so, on a lifeboat without a thruster engine is it even possible to cross this monster-ridden sea? She thinks, it's obvious that it's impossible. It's not just escaping. Even if I manage that, I will be sure to die of starvation in the middle of the ocean. I don't think there's another alternative though. A ball comes near their cells and Rosen shouts, Ugh. I'm going mad. Can't you keep Chu Dash? Suddenly she gets shocked and confused at the same time seeing a child. She thinks seeing her, why is there a child? Rosen said, how the heck did she get here? Maria said, who knows? Could she have brought my cigarettes? Rosen asked, how is that okay for a child? Rosen said, hey kid, you can't be here alone. Where are your parents? Go back quickly. The girl turns towards her and said, oh. Rosen shouts, no. I told you to go back. Why are you coming? The girl comes to her and said, hello. I am Layla Leville. She gets shocked hearing her name and asked, huh, Leville? Do you perhaps know Henry Leville? The girl said, he's my uncle. Do you know him? Are you uncle's friend? Rosen replied, you could say that I know him. Meanwhile, she thinks, that stupid bastard, what are you going not taking care of this child? Rosen said to her, don't you know you shouldn't be here? This isn't a playground for children. She thinks, still, it's a relief she's nothing like her uncle. The girl said, but, I already told my friends that if I came down here, I'd be able to meet Rosen Walker. Rosen asked hearing this, Rosen Walker? The girl replied, yes, Rosen Walker. The most famous escapee in the empire. The witch of al -Kafes. Popol said she was on this boat. I'm able to see her because my grandfather is the captain, but the others didn't believe me. Rosen asked her, did you say your name was Layla? She replied, yes. Rosen said, congratulations, you managed to find me. I'm Rosen Walker. Meanwhile, Henry sneezed making a loud noise, a chew dash. Henry said, I've been having a real bad headache, damn that witch. Ian Kerner said, just think of this as taking a break. The ship charts towards Monty Island and turns back. The scenery is so beautiful that people pay money to sightsee. Henry said, well if it's supposed to be isolated then it should be further away. Henry said, you just fought in the war, are you bored now? I'm hungry now. It's fun for you to sail through a sea overflowing with monsters to go to a prison island. Ian Kerner said, after the war ended, you've really turned into boomer, Henry. Henry said, if I'm acting like a boomer then I'll be a boomer.
That woman, the witch of al Kafez, said that she was, from Rilshan. Henry said, you don't have to worry about it too much. Rylton, Rylton, Riotan, he said, I'm really all right now anyway, yeah? Rosenwalker is also from Rylton. It feels like I've committed a crime while living on the outskirts. Ian Kerner said, I understand. Henry said, yeah, I documented everything, so you probably know. That's why I'm telling you. I think that's probably why you care about her. You should conduct a separate interview. Rylton. It was where we spent our childhood in the military academy. It was also where I first flew an airplane and flew it up into the sky. It was the city that was destroyed by the shelling in the war. Henry said, in a way, she's an annoyingly lucky lady. She managed to escape from the city and from death. Ian Kerner said, yeah, but she's being sentenced to life in Pison. Henry said, and thanks to that, she lost her life. Henry said, she feels like a celebrity. I'm on the way to Monty Island as an escort with Sir Kerner. Ian Kerner replied, yes, Henry. Monty Island, you well know what that means. Henry said, you probably don't know, but regardless, she's not dead. Monty Island, regardless of this and that, at any rate, at least she's still alive. Meanwhile, the girl said, really? She gets so happy and asked, big sis, you're really Rosen Walker? Rosen said, yeah, in return, could you please keep it a secret? Don't tell anyone no matter what. It's top secret, the girl asked. Is everything in the newspaper real? Did you really dig through a cave with a spoon? Rosen replied, yeah, it's all real. The girl shouts, wow. The girl asked, then is it true? Can you use magic? Rosen said, you are Layla, right? The girl replied, yes, I'm Layla Leeville. Rosen said, there's something I'd like to ask Layla. Will you answer me? The girl said, oh. Rosen said, if you do that, I'll answer you. She said, I'll even show you magic. The girl said, but grandfather said it's never okay to do as the prisoners ask. Rosen asked, didn't you want to see magic? The girl said, yeah. Rosen said, you want to see it, right? Rosen said, I'm not asking for anything big. I was just curious. Rosen said, all right. Aren't you a good kid? Layla, all right. She asked, Layla, you know Ian Kerner, right? Layla replied, yes. He's my uncle's boss. He's a war hero. He's the best pilot. Rosen asked, are you close to him? Layla replied, HM, not really. Ian's very blunt. But my uncle said this, Ian doesn't express himself well, but he says he really cares about me. Because he has known me since I was in my mummy's belly, that I could think of him as another uncle. Even so, I still don't know how to do that well. Rosen asked then, is he married? Does he have a lover or a fiancé? Layla replied, he doesn't. Not even a fiancé. Other adults are getting worked up about marriage talks. But Ian doesn't seem to give much thought to it. Rosen thinks hearing this, he doesn't think about it. Rosen asked then, Layla, by any chance, does Ian bring girls to his room? Layla asked, what about the girls? Rosen thinks, she's too pure for this. Rosen asked, a woman in Ian Kerner's room. Have you ever seen him with a woman? Layla replied, hmm, nope. But why though? Rosen thinks, I thought it'd be the case, but still. Rosen said, it's nothing. Rosen asked, Layla, about Ian Kerner. Is he a compassionate person? Layla asked, what does compassionate mean? Rosen said that, it means. Myra said, it means someone who would feel pity on another person, kiddo. Yeah, for example. They'd bring a puppy in for shelter during the rain. They'd cry together with someone else who is shedding tears. That kind of person. Layla starts smiling and said, love? Rosen said, yeah. Maria starts laughing and said, it's quite a spectacle to see a witch gossip about these things. Rosen said, Maria, shut up. Layla said, but from what I think, I don't think he loves anyone. Rosen thinks hearing this, I figured that much. Layla said, but still. Ian is a good person. Because Ian is a hero. Rosen said in a low tone, You're an idiot, Layla. She said, Yes, yes. Thanks, Layla. It doesn't matter how I perceive heroes to be. That's enough. It's now my turn to keep my promise? Do you have anything you can give me? It's all right if it's small. Layla gives her a coin saying, I have a coin. Rosen said, Nice, that's great. Layla asked, What are you going to do with the coin? Rosen replied, Don't you know, Layla? Magic always requires a medium. 
Layla seeing the coin gone disappeared said, the, the coin disappeared. Rosen said no, she holding the coin said, it didn't disappear. She gives the coin to her and said here take it. It's a lucky coin. This is a secret. At sunset this will turn to gold. But you can't tell anyone. Or the magic will dissipate. After Layla leave Maria asked Rosen, hey a moment ago, did you really use magic? Rosen replied, it's just a simple trick. Maria asked then, wouldn't she find out sooner or later? Rosen said I don't think so. Maria asked, weren't you the one that insisted that you couldn't lie? Rosen asked, was I? Maria said then again, if it was really magic, there's no way you would have been caught without a ruckus. Rosen said, even if I ran away, there's water everywhere. Where could I go? Maria asked, why not? Although it'll be unreasonable to escape to land on a lifeboat. Isn't there another way? Maria said, no one knows if the place truly exists. People say that there's a place witches escape to from the world and hide. It's known as the Witch's Island. Balpurgis. Maria asked her, didn't you already know? It's not that far from Monte Island. There are lots of rumors among people, right? Rosen replied, it's not a place that anyone go. There's a reason why it's called the Witch's Island. It's like the last place to seek refuge like a dog. Come on and I'll welcome you. Maria said, I know I was joking. She said, hey Rosen. Lies from pathetic people work well on kids, right? I'd like you to try that on the commander too. What do you think? Rosen said, okay. That's the only way. Use the hero to gain his sympathy. Those words seem plausible. The shallow tricks that have worked for idiots so far won't work on Ian Kerner. He was a soldier and a pilot and now a hero. He's the complete opposite of me. It was as it was told. His life was like a constant chain of victories. And I was confident that I could match Ian Kerner's abilities. I became a person of never-ending humiliation, and even if I lie flat on the ground, weeping, I could give the opponent a decisive victory. Domination is a way sweeter and more addictive feeling than love. And that is, an emotion that is much easier to receive than love. Ian Kerner thinks, Henry will be fine now. But, there will be times like that. Ian Kerner recalls a moment when someone said, you pour out emotions that you don't know whom you're aiming at. Ian replied, I can't control it. What should I do? That person replied, in that case, stop talking and just listen silently. Let them spit out all the words they have inside. He thinks, wait till the end and just answer appropriately, carefully. Ian Kerner said, we've been out for too long. Let's go in now. Henry said, oh yes. Henry walking beside Ian Kerner said, no matter how much I think about it, isn't it ridiculous? How could a war herp escort the witch of al -Kafes? I'm so tired of this. Ian Kerner said, I can't help it. A soldier must obey orders. Henry said, sir, Kerner, after all of your hard work, you're bound to be promoted to a key position, right? The merits you've acquired is no joke. The military should add some more stars. Ian said, well, Henry said, that's for sure. The only people who despise the Lord are scumbags and people from Ryleton. We are having a hard time because of that. Everyone must have rushed to hand it over to you, sir. In short, they couldn't take care of Ryleton. Instead, they are asking you to show people how you will punish a witch from Ryleton by dragging her, the sole survivor, away and by showing them that you imprisoned her yourself in Monty Island they will ignore the loss that you faced and support you again. They probably knew that and that's why they ordered you to do it. It's all for show. Ian Kerner has to be the perfect hero of the Empire. Flawless with no blemishes. Anyway after finishing this, take a break and live comfortably. Now all that's left is a shining road in front of you right sir? Ian said a shining road. War hero Ian Kerner. It was only after the war when I wore my uniform and passed the triumphal arch that I realized it. People gathered like clouds shouting the same name, holding a flower basket and scattering colorful petals. However, was I happy to stand in front of such a lively scene? Was my heart full? What expression did I have when I passed through the triumphal arch? I should have laughed. Did I show a proper smile? I can't remember. Henry said, you can't protect everyone. Is there such a thing as a perfect victory? You aren't a god, sir. We all know that the commander always has to choose the least evil way. That's just complaining. In any case, don't worry about Rosenwalker. There's no need for you to step up, sir. 
I'll take care of it myself. Ian Kerner said I'll do it myself, don't pay attention to this matter and just focus on recuperation. Henry said I'm not a patient anymore, what do you mean? No, you don't have to do that. It's the same either way, Ian Kerner said it's not your fault. At that time, all the operations ordered to the squadron were crazy gambles. If it wasn't for the commander, everything would have been a failure. If it wasn't my fault, then who was responsible? For their death? Transport the prisoner to Monty Island. Particularly, keep an eye on Rosen Howards. Keep an eye on Rosen Howards. Rosen Howards. Rosen Howards, she's an escapee from Ryleton and their only survivor. Hey, look at her. She's alive and perfectly fine. I am. Rosen said, hey, what do you think you're doing after calling for me? She asked, are you listening? Ian Kerner said, that's right. Then, continuing on, the next is the shark. I don't need to tell you about a shark's diet for you to understand, right? Sharks. Rosen leans towards him and shouts in anger, just stop with this now. Rosen said, yeah, I get it. To sum it up, it would be idiotic of me if I had any thoughts of escaping from there, right? So stop lecturing me about sea monsters. She shouts, just how many days has it been? Or did you really think I was an idiot? Ian Kerner said, there's a very thin line between a hero and an idiot. It should be noted that you shouldn't think about the aftermath of both. If you start to think that way, then you'll never muster up the courage to do it. Rosen said, I wasn't thinking straight. Ian Kerner said, how brave. Some people even thought of you as their dark hero, right? Rosen asked him, so, do you think I'm an idiot or a hero? He said, in my opinion, when you escaped from the prison, you were an idiot. Don't act so violently towards me. Rosen said, you just called me an idiot though. He said, I just answered because you asked. Rosen asked, so what you're saying is that I should have served 50 years in prison? I think that's a more idiotic thing to do. She thinks, if there is anything I learned from these past few days of talking. She said, then let's hear what you have to say. She thinks rather than crying or acting pitiful in front of this man. Rosen said about what I should have done. She thinks, he was more enticed when I said complete nonsense. Rosen thought, he feel for it, he feel for it. Ian Kerner reading something on a paper said, when you received your first verdict, if you came out clean with your crimes, then you would have received a commutation. If you became a model prisoner, then you could have been eligible for a parole, or you could have been transferred to a better prison. Rosen with a smile on her face said then I would have died. Because I wouldn't have been able to escape Ryleton. Rosen said, it's just a joke, a joke. Was it not funny? Rosen said to Bane with, I don't understand why I have to rot in prison for 50 years. Ian Kerner said, the sentence for murder is from 8 years to 50 years. It's written in the law. Rosen said, I didn't kill him, but sure let's say I killed him a hundred times over. How come my sentence is 50 years? A long time ago, a man who lived right next door to me beat his own wife to death, but got an eight-year sentence. Ian Kerner points his finger towards her. He said that reason must be written in the law as well. Rosen said, but I can't read. Ian said I know that. Didn't I tell you myself? It's written in the law. Rosen said that. Ian Kerner raised from his chair and said the reason why you're going to Monty Island and serving life in prison is because you brought this upon yourself. He said, I went along with your act for too long. Rosen shouts, wait. Ian Kerner grabs her from her handcuffs and said, this talk is over. She shouts, wait. Hear me out. She thinks, I can't get out of here like this. If I leave this room right now, then it'll just be repeated. In the worst case scenario, another opportunity might not arise again. If I were to gain his interest through my nonsense, then the only opportunity I have is now. You have to think about it, Rosen. What do I have to say for Ian Kerner to gain interest in me? Rosen said to him, Then you're like me too, right? He turns towards her and said, You're an idiot. Rosen said, What did you say? You said it before. There us a fine line between a hero and an idiot. She said, You're no different than me. You're the light hero, and I'm the dark hero. And we're both idiots. She asked, Is there any difference between us? She said, Nobody believed that we would win the war. We're a weak empire who has the grandiose name of empire plastered on it, and the opponent we were facing was Talas, an empire who defeated a bunch of other nations. He clenched his hand and said, we won in the end. She said, yes, it's just an insubstantial victory.
Just what on earth did we gain from it? People died and the land fell to ruins. She pointing her finger towards his uniform said, You are just a hero that wears a nice uniform, escorting a worthless prisoner here. So just what is the proud war hero doing here, doing this kind of work? Ian Kerner gets furious hearing this and said, Shut up. Hook, line, and sinker. It is used to emphasize that someone has been completely deceived or tricked. She said, You call that a victory? Ian Kerner said, Don't carelessly run that mouth of yours. She thinks, Hit me now. She said, Hell. Do you think that's a victory you should be proud of? She thinks, Enduring brief moment of pain is nothing. Step on me with your shoes. It's okay. Because I'm familiar with pain, Ian Kerner said, Rosen Howards, you're right. She gets confused and said, what? Ian Kerner said, but you have no right to say those kinds of words. A lot of comrades died under the skies of their own country. As it has always been, they won't be written down in history. However, despite knowing that, they gave away their youthful lives to protect this country's citizens. You people who only know how to run away from problems, can't even be thankful for that. But at least, at very least, you shouldn't have insulted them. He said, I hope you understand from this opportunity given to you that nobody lives like you. And, I'm pretty sure you wanted to provoke me to gain my attention, so stop with the bullshit and tricks you are playing. Your provocations and lies are too shallow to deceive me. If you want to win your apartment over with sympathy then I suggest trying to find someone else. She thinks seeing him like this, are you the same person who got angry before? She said, I didn't lie. Ian Kerner said, you really don't exceed my expectations. Should I tell you one thing? Honestly, there is no need you to be handcuffed when we are above the ocean. Nevertheless, the reason you're handcuffed is to show the weight of your sin, the sin of taking another person's life. Hearing this she thinks, although it was said by the same person, there are two completely different voices that are overlapping in my head. Rosen said, Ian Kerner, you're really a fucking idiot. Ian Kerner said, I fully understand what kind of person you are. Rosen Howards. He said, there are no more questions now. Go back. This is all for this part. Hope you have enjoyed this story. I will make next part if I got 250 likes on this video. Thanks for watching.